Nearly a week later and the Clapham Acid attacker has still not been found. Abdul Azidi, a convicted criminal who should have been deported but was given asylum, injured 12 people including two children during the attack on Wednesday last week. Police initially failed to put out a proper description of the guy for nearly 24 hours, giving him a head start, and now, mother of all surprises, he's nowhere to be found. Now speculation is growing that Azidi, an Afghan who arrived illegally on the back of a lorry, could be being protected by... The community. Oh yes, the community that provides safe harbour to... Checks notes. Deranged violent lunatics who throw toxic substances in toddlers' faces. Wow, what a community that is. Diversity proving to be our greatest strength once again. Former counter-terrorism coordinator Nick Oldworth said Azidi could have been picked up by an ally and moved somewhere else. The reason they've offered a £20,000 reward is usually because there's a sense that somebody inside the community might well be harbouring this individual. The people you arrest for wrong think would suggest that there's an entire imported community willing to hide him out based on ethnic and religious solidarity. But that would bring into question their allegiances, and that's a crime, so it can't be true, can it? It reminds me of when Paris massacre jihadist Salar Abdeslam was able to hide out in Molenbeek, Belgium, Brussels, for five months before he was caught. Same reason the community had stepped in to lend a helping hand. Great, let's import more people from this community. After the BBC platformed people who insisted that the case had nothing whatsoever to do with borders or the asylum system, instead asserting it was all about misogyny and incel culture. Every day, women will face misogyny and microaggressions. We see ever-increasing incel culture. Now a conservative minister responded to the fact that the attacker was allowed to carry out the attack as a result of him being given in asylum by saying the whole thing has nothing to do with asylum. Who then commits a sexual offence, or more than one sexual offence, is granted refugee status by a tribunal. How is that possible? Well, I think that's uh, something that uh, more than one person are asking, as, as you say, and I think my understanding is the Home Secretary has asked for all the details. But this is not really about asylum. This is about, obviously, um, the attack on, um, you know, a mother and her children. The attack wouldn't have happened if he hadn't been given asylum. Of course it's about asylum. It's all about asylum. It's all about fake refugees claiming they've had a sudden conversion to Christianity and being given the right to remain. Now we learn that at least 40 asylum seekers on the Bibby stock home barge are converting to Christianity for precisely the same reason. Gaming our complete joke of an asylum system and proving once again how mass migration and open borders consistently leads to real world harm. <laughs> If you value what I do and you want to help support me, please visit pauljosephwatson.locals.com and either pledge a one-time donation or subscribe to join my community, get early access videos and message me directly. And exclusive live streams coming soon too. Promise. Check out the Locals link down in the description. And don't forget to take a look at the brand new website, modernity.news. That's where you'll find all my content, including exclusive articles. That's modernity.news. <laughs> Thank you.